Hello and welcome to my retro watches. And yes, my wife did buy me this t-shirt. She told me I had to wear it into a video. <laughs> so this video, it's going to be. Now then, AliExpress have been in contact again and they wanted me to promote another uh, watch for you guys. And as much as I was hoping I could choose another tourbillon, so at least we could compare one tourbillon with the other one and then perhaps actually try and clean the old one up because I know that's a video you all want to see. There wasn't one on that list. So I chose another San Martin. Now I did one before. I thought the quality was really, really impressive. I've got another one. Now this is a thorny subject because this is a bit of a homage. Now I do own quite a few homage watches actually, but I know it's a delicate subject, but this is a vintage inspired watch. A watch is pretty much unobtainable for all of us and I will show you which one it is on the bench. Here we have the canister, for want of a better word, that San Martin provide their watches in. All very good of course, but we want to see the watch that's in the box. So which one is it? It's this one. Now then, this is the San Martin 6200 and it gets its inspiration from the Rolex 6532, which was in Dr. No, worn by Sean Connery, my favourite uh, Bond of all time, really. I don't know why. I think I grew up with it. And uh, he really was the cool guy, wasn't he? Let's face it. And this watch I chose because it's got that vintage vibe. And I'm all about vintage watches. And I know most of you are too. And perhaps... You might see what I can see in this watch. It is a real good nod to something that we cannot afford realistically. How many of these are around uh, genuine? And uh, can we have a bank balance enough to buy one? So we're going to get it out of here. We'll show you a little bit more. Uh, first of all, there is something really interesting about this watch uh, that you've got to get involved with. It has this sort of rivet style bracelet. Uh, which are screws essentially and it's supplied obviously with more links than you're ever going to need so I've got to size that and it comes with no instructions for it but it comes with some Loctite so clearly we've got to remove some screws put a bit of Loctite in to hold them so that will be a bit interesting because I don't know at this stage how many links I am to take out so we'll get round to that in a moment uh, just for those of you who may not have seen a San Martin before, in the box here, you get some tools right at the bottom so you can do the job. There's a spring bar tool and there's a couple of screwdrivers in there as well. And there's a little hand tag. Uh, interestingly enough, you get a warranty card that is dated. So that is important. I think I've got it upside down. There we go. Uh, we get a little card as well. You can leave a review on. And of course, the instruction manual. Uh, should we know, not know, sorry, how to operate our watch. So there we go. So let's cut to the chase. Let's try and size the bracelet. So you uh, see me now taking the second link out and they're pretty tricky to be honest with you. You've got a screw either side, uh, a small screw that goes into sort of a shaft screw and um, not easy because obviously you've got to use two screwdrivers. Uh, my suggestion is to use very fat-ended screwdrivers that fit the slot very, very well. And I'm going to attempt on camera, if I can, to uh, loosen them off. Okay, there we go. A bit off the screen. Uh, not the easiest of things. I put some tape around it as well, just to be 100% sure that I don't slip and I don't scratch. Because that's the last thing you want to do on a nice new watch. And there we are. There's the, uh, the shaft, if you like, and the little tiny screw. So, you know, so far, it's a bit hands-on. Uh, not for the faint-hearted that, I think uh, you've got to just take your time, certainly if you're not used to using screwdrivers, because like I say, you don't want to scratch the watch. 
Aesthetically, I kind of like the idea of this riveted uh, bracelet look, but uh, this uh, is a bit of a downside for me. Let's face it, I've now got to uh, put the next one in or the end link back in and actually use a bit of the uh, thread locker to be sure. And I can't really do that until I've sized it and, and know that it's completely perfect. So I won't bother showing the, the thread locker. All I will use literally is uh, an oiler. I'll get it on the screen. Big wide oiler. I'll dip it in that and just put a little bit on the thread. Doesn't need much to be fair. A thread locker. It works uh, by the tightening. So there we go. Right, let's crack on with this review. Here we are out in the daylight as usual. It's the best place to show a watch off in a review because that daylight hides no prisoners at all. Now, the official name of this watch is the San Martin Retro Water Ghost 6200. It's definitely got that vintage retro look about it, which is what I like. It's a new watch with an old vibe because not everybody likes vintage watches. They've got this perceived unreliability or gambling about buying one. It's a bit of a minefield, etc., etc. But here you can get the look that you're looking for with the reassurance in theory that you're not going to need to service that watch for many, many years. OK, the design is not original, but then the watch it gets its inspiration from has been copied many times over the decades. And to buy the original is out of the reach for just about most of us mere mortals. Uh, here we can get the look and the feel without the worry of the costs that are involved to get the original. Let's start off with the specifics. The case diameter is a perfect 38 millimeters, which immediately makes this suitable for all wrist sizes, in my opinion. The bezel is slightly wider than the case at about 39 millimeters, but that actually gives you help to turn the bezel much more easily. Uh, the bezel insert is ceramic. It's not loomed other than the pip at 12. Uh, incidentally, the bezel does line up better than it looks on the pictures. Um, I'm editing the video afterwards and I'm noticing that I haven't quite lined it up and that is my fault, not the watches. Lug tip to lug tip is 46 millimeters. It's a bit longer with those male end links that you can see there, but more on that later in the video. The watch itself is 13 millimeters thick and that'll also be due to the single dome sapphire crystal that does sit quite proud above the bezel actually, so it does add a little bit of height. And finally, the lug width is 20 millimeters, which is great for strap changes. But personally, I think this uh, riveted style bracelet suits it very well. And I certainly wouldn't be changing it onto a strap, but that's just, again, my personal preference. Let's turn our attention now to the dial. It's a simple affair of printed loom hour markers with that vintage coloration. There's a nice train minute track running around the perimeter and it's finished with the Mercedes handset. Uh, all contrasting to the matte black dial. Black and gold always goes well together, in my opinion. And I do actually like that second hand as well, having the loom circle and then the smaller counterbalance circle on the heel. At six, it's printed the waterproof rating of 200 meters. And to obtain that, there is a very plain screw down case back with no markings on it whatsoever. And I'm a fan of nice case backs. And this one's going to get a zero rating from me just because it's got no identity at all. OK, it might be in keeping to the original that it's homaging, but come on, Sam Martin, you can do better than that, I'm sure. Uh, there's also a screw down crown to aid the water resistance, and that is signed with an S. The watch is a mismatch of logos. There's a lovely script on the dial saying San Martin, which I really do actually like. And then on the clasp, it's the new San Martin hexagon logo, which is embossed. It's actually very, very well executed. Uh, but this, I think, is a new addition to San Martin's identity. And they haven't carried that onto the crown. They've obviously kept the old crown, perhaps, with that S in. And it's a little bit of a shame. I think you could literally have all of these flow in quite nicely to give the watch its own identity. And now the classic loom shot. It's loomed with C3 Super Luminova, which gives it that sort of green glow. And because it's kind of have that vintage vibe, it doesn't glow as brightly as some of the watches I've reviewed recently. However, it does seem to last for quite some time. And of course, it's very legible. Sam Martin are known for their case finishing. Uh, they're very proud of it. They mentioned it in the email to me uh, originally, actually. And I have to agree. This is my second Sam Martin to have a look at. And it's done really, really well. The contrasting between the polishing, there's a little leading edge or a chamfer, if you like, uh, on the side of the case. 
that's really done nicely. It's nice and sharp. Uh, it doesn't seem to blend in with the brushing. So interesting to know really which one they do first. Do they do the brushing first and then tape it off and then do the polishing? It'd be really interesting to see. I mean, it, clearly it's all done on machines, but they've got it down to a fine art and it's definitely not disappointing. That also carries on onto the bracelet as well. The bracelet is brushed lovely. And then on the side on these riveted links, those side links, because they are sort of part of a link by lots of things, are highly polished, gives it that good contrast. But again, a little bit of uh, attention to detail, really. And then finally, the clasp. Well, the clasp has got four micro adjusts, so plenty of uh, room to get the sizing right. And lovely brushing again on the top, uh, chamfered on the edge, polished. And then, of course, their applied logo, which is beyond me how they do that, actually. It's really, really well, you know, polished centres and things like that. Must be uh, a good tool that they've got <laughs> in order to produce that finish. This watch is in their AliExpress store right now for 183 UK pounds. That includes uh, shipping, but it does not include any import taxes that you might have in the country that you live in. Now, this video is going out on the 28th of March, which is the AliExpress sale. So I'd expect to see a better saving in the sale. Uh, AliExpress have also given the channel a discount code, which is RETROWATCH, all in capital letters, and that will give you $20 per $200 spent, I believe, on the platform. Uh, there's an affiliate link for this particular watch down below in the description. And of course, I do earn a small commission for any purchases you guys make. Does this watch represent a good value for that money? Well, I have to say yes in many respects. If you can overcome the, the homage aspect. Now, as I think I've already said in this video, I, I've got quite a few homage watches, so and I'm not a watch snob. I, I don't mind them to an extent. Certainly if they're a, an unobtainable watch in my view uh, or something that's not made anymore, then perhaps it's not too bad to do. Um, but, you know, what are you getting? You're getting... A nice size watch that looks vintage, that's new. It'll suit many people. This watch has sold very well, actually. And there are quite a few dial variations. So you obviously have got one I've got here. There's one that's got some numerals on it. There's one has a sort of a sunburnt orange. They call it a leather dial. I'll put a photo up of these, of course. And that one does look strange to me, but that might float your boat. I don't know. Go and take a look if you're interested. Um... There we go, that's the, the price bit out of the way. I want to move on now to the more important part. What does it look like on the wrist? Here's the watch on my seven inch wrist. Fits really well, but that 38 millimeter case is the sweet spot by far. But pay close attention to those male end links. They kind of make you see the end of the bracelet, but you can buy female links, which is what I did. I fitted them and it transformed the watch completely. And now it looks really, really nice. I guess if you've got a smaller wrist, that's what they're for. Of course, if you've got larger wrists, you probably wouldn't see it so pronounced. Here we are back on the bench. And I have to say this watch is really aesthetically pleasing. It's as good as it looks in the video. I really do like this vintage vibe. And I also quite like, and you can maybe just see it here, the crystal um is just a domed sapphire so you get that sort of distortion as well at angles which the vintage ones did but what lets it down is inside the watch is not the beating heart of a lion it's a seiko nh35 and just like the phoebus before it this one is running really badly um, the beat error i cannot live with at all i'm not even going to check this watch in different positions um, and you can see there's a really poor trace on one side of the pallet fork. And that's why we're getting this sort of funny line there. Uh, that could be just a bit of debris. It's very difficult to say at this stage. And of course, I'm going to crack it open and I'm going to try and adjust that because uh, I just don't like it. And it's a shame, really, because these micro brands are starting to... Um, well, I'm starting to get quite impressed with the quality of what they can work with and what they can produce, but they're not checking the movements. They're just putting the movements in, putting the dials on and sending them out to the customer. And, um, you know, a little bit more R&D. You know, clearly Sam Martin are very good at their R&D. Their finishing is absolutely exquisite, but 
to send the watch out, it's got a beat error of 0.9 a rough trace on one side of the pallet, which is eventually going to cause some trouble. I can forgive the rate, plus 14. Not too bothered about that, although I will tidy that up as well. Uh, so come on, San Martin, lead the way and actually uh, regulate your movements before they go out the door as well. So with the back off and dial down position, of course, we're getting a, a much smoother trace. I would expect that, uh, but I'm still going to give it a nudge. So it's quite uh, a sensitive little one, this. And that should have improved the beta error. Hopefully you can see that on the screen. There we go, so that's much more improved and we're now running a little bit fast. And that little nudge there, which you probably wouldn't have seen will have calmed it down quite a lot. Right, so after a bit of a fettling, uh, we have an interesting reading dial down, as good as I would like. Obviously gaining five seconds, beat error is absolutely spot on. However, this watch has got a problem, and I think it's possibly a balance problem actually, because if I now turn it over, to dial up. Uh, that initial reading we used to get out of the box is now much, much more scattered and worse. You can kind of see it creeping across the screen now. There's a lot of noise in the background. And uh, there's obviously a deviation, so the rate has changed. But I'm not entirely convinced uh, that this movement is as good as it should be. Uh, that's no discredit to San Martin at all, to be honest with you. What I will end up doing is taking the balance out and cleaning it and just see if that's going to make any difference. I think most people could live with that. It's still, uh, the rate is plus 12 seconds in this position and the beat error is 0.2, but you shouldn't see that much variation, I don't think, from dial up to dial, dial down, even on one of these. Uh, so I think that's what you get for mass-produced Seiko movements at this price point at the end of the day. Uh, this is still well, well within Seiko's tolerances that they give out. Their tolerances are huge, really. Um, so no surprise there. But there we go. That's the movement. Uh, I will sort that out for my own peace of mind. And if I do before the end of the video, then of course I will include it. Now to conclude the video with the pros and the cons. So I'm going to start with the cons. Firstly, the design. It's not theirs. So they can't take any credit for that, despite the fact that the watch is actually really, really nice. Secondly, it's that bracelet adjustment. What a faff it really is. And when you read the reviews on their listings, there are many people complaining about scratching the links, or breaking a screw or even chipping a screwdriver. And I'm not surprised at all. I think they should include some sort of instruction about how to go about this, like using protective tape on the vulnerable areas and the strict instruction as well to use the correct size screwdrivers or even provide the correct size screwdrivers. The ones provided are just not really strong enough for the task. Uh, they're a bit sloppy, actually, in the slots as well. They're clearly going to be okay for screw pins, but when these you've got to turn 
one screw in opposite directions uh, it is quite a procedure and i can see how damage happens so come on san martin you don't want people to damage the watches before they've worn them so try and do something about this simple instruction is going to aid no end that problem uh, lastly it's just the logo mashup really there's too many for my liking and it spoils the flow of the watch uh, similar with the plain case back i've seen some sam martins with better case backs like like an embossed shark for instance looks really nice this just looks really uninteresting it's not even um there's no writing on it no nothing so perhaps uh, sam martin if you're listening think about that for any of your future models and on to the pros then it's that retro vintage vibe. It's an affordable look with the reliability of it being a new watch. So many people I've spoken to over the years, including fellow YouTubers, are all scared of vintage watches and the Pandora's boxes that they perceive them to be. Uh, watches like this Water Ghost are a terrific option and they do offer something to fill that gap in the market for the people who just, they, they like the look, but they're fearful of actually owning a vintage watch uh, secondly of course my wife also likes this watch and trust me when you've got over 200 watches and the only time she comments is usually in a negative way for her to have actually noticed this and like it uh, says it all to me and perhaps it means it's something i should wear more often certainly to uh, keep in her good books when we're going out and lastly regardless of people's thoughts of the origins of where these watches are manufactured Personally, I can see way past that preconception. Uh, this brand does offer a well-made product. It's got really, really good finishing at a very affordable price. You can wear one of these without worrying of knocking it or wearing something really, really valuable. And it's also a mechanical watch. And there is something so beautiful in wearing a small little machine on your arm. Right, that's it. That's the end of the review. So thanks very much for watching everybody uh, please leave a like if you enjoyed this video please leave comments below because i'll be reading every one of them and try to reply to as many as i can and hopefully sam martin may be reading them too and get some ideas and feedback from you guys uh, certainly uh hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed this video hit the bell button to see the content as i make it uh, go live and of course join the facebook group retro and vintage watches and restorations 10,000 people in there all watch mad some of them are professional watchmakers a lot of collectors and a lot of tinkerers like myself so come and join the fun in there and if you do want to support the channel in any way possible then go to my website myretrowatches.co.uk there's a tool page on there you can buy the tools that i use uh, through amazon affiliates and ebay affiliates such like that and uh, that way uh, I get a little bit of a kickback, it doesn't cost you any more of course and uh, that sort of cash will go towards projects and tools and things for the bench that I can show you in future videos. Thanks very much and I'll see you in the next one.